What's up, coronavirus gangsters? How about some random? Okay, so because of that project that shall remain nameless that I've been working on so much lately, I have been in doing uh, just a tremendous amount of, of detail work. Wires, cables, hoses, tubes, and the like. And I've posted a few sort of close-up shots, and people have asked me about some tips. Um, now, I've got a, a an hour-long video about doing uh, stuff like this, but if you haven't seen it or don't have the time or just can't stand to listen to me for that long, <laughs> then uh, this is this is a, a this is a 10 minutes of random video, but it'll be a, just sort of an encapsulated version of, of that. And, and part of the reason that I, I'm doing this is because uh, Martin Kovach sent me a message this morning asking me if I had some advice. And, you know, when Martin asks you for some tips, you, you know you must be doing something right because we all know uh, what a great model maker he is. And if you haven't watched his videos on YouTube, you should because they are without a doubt the best model making videos uh, around. So anyway, this is a, a piece that I've spent a lot of time working on. Um, and it's, you know, got a lot of plumbing on it. This is all hydraulic stuff. Uh, fuel lines, that's a hydraulic reservoir right there. And so just a, you know, quick recap of how I'm doing this stuff and how I get it to look as neat and tight as I do. And that's a big thing for me because I feel like that's really what makes the difference in terms of authenticity. You obviously have to get it scaled correctly. Um, but, you know, real mechanical tubing is bent out of straight sections using tubing benders. Um, you know, tools that create uniform radius bends. Uh, you know, it, it, that's just the way it is. And it, it, so if you just take a piece of of lead wire off of a roll, like this one, say, okay. And I use a, a lot of lead wire for this. This is the Bass Pro Shops lead wire selection. It is fantastic. There's no reason to buy any that's packaged specifically for model making. I got that whole set for about 20 bucks and it's lasted me for going on three or four years now. Anyway, when it comes off the roll, you can see that it's obviously, it's, you know, it's, it's bendy and wiggly. And if you just start trying to create sections of, of mechanical tubing with that, even if they're going to all be real bendy themselves like those are right there, that's going to show and it's just not going to look as good. And especially if you want to try and create something like this that in real life was created from straight sections of mechanical tubing. So, number one tip. thing that I most recommend when you're doing these uh, is straighten it before you bend it. And this uh, polishing stick is really good for that because you get some traction and this one is way too bent. You got to straighten it a little bit by hand to start with. But anyway, once you get it close, then you roll it. And you can see how quickly it becomes pretty much perfectly straight. And you can do this with any kind of wire, but lead wire especially, even those little bitty wiggles will come right out of there. Um, you can even use uh, a coarser sanding stick to, uh, to to put a pattern on it. You can use a file uh, to do that. This stuff is so soft that it'll emboss just about any pattern in it r real easily. Um, but that will also take the metallic shine off of it if you you know if you if that's a an effect that you want. Now the next thing is doing the bins themselves. All right, these things are priceless. These are uh, beadsmith round jaw pliers. Now with lead wire you have to have a really light touch because you can very easily smash it flat. You can even smash it in two just like I did there. And obviously you can you know you can screw up your your careful straightening work but you'll develop a feel for this stuff and so that you can hold it very lightly and then, and this is really important, you have to apply force right next to where the bend is, is going to be. Just put your finger on there and curl it around there 
and bam, just like that, you've got a very neat and tidy bend. And with these things, you can get variable radii. Now, what if you can't do it, you know, out in the open like this? Uh, because sometimes you have to have the tube in place um, while you're doing the bending. That's not an uncommon thing. And for that, another really important tip, I think, is is to have a um, uh, one end of it uh, really well secured. Um, so like f for for this one, okay, I created this bend up here uh, just by, you know, out in the open just by eyeballing it and, and it took a little bit of, of uh, effort to get it right. I think I had to try it a couple of times. But once I got it on there, I couldn't really bend this tail until I got it in place. And so what I do there is I just use things like toothpicks uh, or any, really, you know, anything round that's the right diameter. And you just, and this is why it's important to have one end of the thing secure. Because you put your your forming tool down and hold the, the thing in place. Or, or, you know, since it's, since it's already secure on one end, then you just create the bend by moving it around your forming tool. So, you know, you get a, a pretty good bend. Not quite as good as using the pliers, but you can also see the problem with doing it without using a forming tool, okay? See how that radius is not consistent? That's just a, a you know, that's just a, 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 a demerit <laughs> in terms of realism because a tubing bender does not leave a bend like that. It leaves a bend like that. So anyway, just some, some tips on bending. If you're looking at the fittings on the end of this, that is Albion Alloys uh, aluminum tubing. And it's fantastic because it's so easy to cut. Um, on these parts that are painted, and I needed something a little bit bigger, and I wasn't worried about the color, uh, I use the hairline vinyl tubing. That's this stuff right here. And uh, it's just fantastic. Comes in like 20 colors, three different sizes. Get it on Amazon or from your fly tying supply. And this stuff is great because being, you know, vinyl tubing, um, it cuts super easy. And so you can cut little sections of it to represent fittings. And of course you can use it to actually make hoses. Okay, now another thing that I've been doing that people have been asking me about is uh, cable bundling. Now I, you know, aircraft, whatever, they are full of bundled electrical cables. And um, a lot of model makers uh, will try to simulate that by just taking two or three pieces of, of wire and twisting them into a twisted pair. And it, it looks terrible in my opinion. It just, it's not realistic. And I just, it just to me, it just kind of comes off as, as, as a lazy technique. So what I want to do is create a, um, a bundle, a bundled cable uh, that looks a lot more realistic. And it's hard. Uh, I get it. it. It takes time and, it, and it's difficult. But here's a picture of what I'm talking about. This this type of thing. Okay, see how those cables are bundled together? They all run in the same direction. They're not twisted uh, and they're gathered together. Uh, you know, in real life, zip ties, um, old, you know, antique aircraft, World War II vintage, things like that. They actually used waxed string to tie those cable bundles together. So that's, you know, I feel like that's a pretty realistic representation of what you want to, of, of, of the real thing. Question is, how do you do it? Because it is hard to do. And so I can kind of understand why uh, people will take the easy way out by just twisting a couple of, you know, pieces of wire together. So uh, I'm already at 10 minutes of random, but whatever. Let me just show you how I'm doing this. So. This is my ultra high molecular weight polyethylene cutting board. And you can see I have drilled some holes in it over here in the corner. And those holes are 
you know, uh, the size basically to represent the uh, di total diameter of the cable bundle in question. So I've got like four different holes there based on how many strands I want uh, the, the bundle to include. So what I've done is I I'm just using that as a sort of forming tool, gathering tool, whatever you want to call it, um, so that the bundle is, is already together. Now, you could just take and put some super glue on that and bundle it together, but there's two, pro there, there's two problems with that. One is it gets kind of messy and it also gets really stiff. And the other is that you don't get the, you know, the zip ties or the wax string effect. So what am I doing for that? This is where Easy Line comes in. All right, now this, these uh, cables, I've got a whole selection of, of stuff that I'm using um, for this. This particular thing is this Wildfire 6,000 inch beading string. Um, it's not really 6,000, the, th the core may be, but the outside diameter is really 9,000. But it's pretty good, and it's a good representation of white electrical wiring. So anyway, regardless of what you're using as your actual cable, uh, and I've done it with with wire, with you know, with with this uh, type of thread. Here's another one. This is a really really small type of uh, of uh, fly tying or fishing material. Super super fine. You can see uh, how small it is. Um, you can even do it with heavier stuff like this one. This is a uh, a 19 thousandths uh, diameter white cable. Um, so anyhow, regardless of what you're using for the cables themselves, all right, Easy Line is fantastic as the thing that uh, secures them all together. So what I'm doing, and then uh, this is oh, this is going to be slow, but what I'm doing is tying it into a loop first and if I can do this with my terrible dexterity anybody can do this so there's once now here's here's an important trick do it twice and I'll explain why here in a second Okay, so it's now basically a double knot, all right? So then what you do is, get this over here, just slide it over the, uh, the cable bundle and tie it off as close to your forming tool as possible and hang on tight and tie it, you know, stretch it really tight. Hopefully that's on camera, you can see that. Okay, and this is the reason for the double knot because now when I release the tension, it should mostly stay put. If you only do a single knot, it will, it'll come loose and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll just have a floppy little loop there. Okay, now the next important thing is you do need a little bit of glue on that, and so I'm using this Bob Smith uh, Instacure Extra Thin uh, CA, and it doesn't take much. You really, really do not want much because if you use a lot, it's going to end up wicking all through this bundle, and it'll stiffen it, and it will just, it'll just be hard to to form. So, uh, what you want is just enough right there on the knot to make sure that it won't come untied. Now, here is part of the magic of using this cutting board as my forming tool, okay? Because now I've got these tails hanging off here that I need to get rid of. So, and this is also why I tie the, the thing up close to the cutting board, because now I just pull that out tight, take a, a scalpel, 
and just reach right in there and cut off both sides of it. You can leave as much of a tail as you want. And now I just advance it, whatever the increment is, to the next one. And you just keep doing that. And then when you're done, you just pull it out. And now you've got a bundled cable that looks super realistic. So anyway, that was now uh, 16 minutes of not so random random. Time to go.